one. And um, Genesis, the first chapter, and the entire study for the night, sisters and brothers, is going to be uh, the first chapter of Genesis and the first three verses of the second chapter. So, Genesis 1, 1 through 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. In the beginning, God creates the heaven and the earth, and he makes them separate places. God makes them into separate places because one cannot live on heaven and earth at the same time. So God separates heaven and earth. And he instructs us to work out our soul's salvation on earth before it is that we hope to be promoted to heaven. Now, according to verse 2, what does the earth look like at this time? It's that form. It was void. The earth doesn't have, it, it doesn't have any form. It, no form at it, all. It's mm-hmm. black. It's void, it's empty, Mm -hmm. Uh, but God creates the heavens and the earth. Uh, Someone tell me, please, what is the Holy Trinity? Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm The Holy Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Bible goes to great lengths to tell us that all three are one that the Father is the Son, the Son is the Spirit, the Spirit is God. Uh, There are three different manifestations of the same Spirit. Now, when does Jesus come on the scene in Scripture? When When do we first get introduced to Jesus, the person, in the Holy Scriptures? Matthew. Yeah, in the in the in the in the New Testament, when we Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is when we first find Jesus, when we first see Jesus um, in the New Testament. But when we see, and whenever it is that we see this phrase, the Spirit of God, and we are looking in the Old Testament, whenever it is that we see the phrase, the Spirit of God we are referring to Jesus. And so Jesus, prior to his birth, prior to him coming on the scene in the Gospels as a baby, as a human, Jesus was, Jesus is the Spirit of God. But the reason that Jesus was able to live among us for 33 years as a human without spot, without blemish, was because he was there with God even in the beginning. In the beginning, Jesus was there. In the beginning, Jesus, for the creation, Jesus was assisting, Jesus was helping, and because Jesus came from God, spent time with God, knew God, Jesus was able to carry out God's plan. Verses 3 Four and five. And God said, Let there be light. There was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day day. Okay, on the first day of creation, what does God create? On the first day of creation, what is it that God created? Light and darkness. Day and night. Day and night. Yeah, God creates yeah, let's 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 say light. But day and night is correct. But for purposes of our future study we're going to go with light. 
God creates light. But God says, let there be light. Mm -hmm. Who is God talking to? Himself. He's talking to himself, and he's talking out into the earth. And what did we just establish that the earth looked like? Uh, the earth was... No form, just void. No form, void, black, almost like walking out in the middle of nowhere at night. So what I'm saying is, and what we see, is that God speaks to nothing and brings forth something. Mm-hmm. Not only does God bring forth something, but he brings forth something that gives life, and he brings forth something that affirms life. So here's the question. Why do we serve God? Why is it that we get on conference calls at 7 o'clock at night? Why is it that we decide to interrupt our family time for Bible study? We serve God because we serve a God that can speak to the nothingness in our lives. We serve a God that can speak to whatever is lacking in our lives. We serve a God that can speak to the failures in our lives. And when God speaks to us, as black as we are, as formless as we are, as much of a void as we have, whenever God speaks to us, God can simply say, let there be. And when God says, let there be, God has an excellent track record with making something out of our nothing. Mm-hmm. Yep. So what does, what does God call the light? Good. Day. Day. He calls it good, and he calls it everything God makes, he calls good. Yeah. And, he, but, and he also calls it day. And he calls the dark what? Night. 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 And just like that, out of nothing, from nothing, from nowhere, God speaks, and I like what someone said, God speaks to himself and creates something out of himself. And he gives the world something that it cannot give itself. Just like that, out of nothing, God gives the world its first day. All right, verses verses 6 through 8. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. We see that God speaks again. This time when God speaks, he makes a vault to separate the waters above the earth from the waters below the earth. He separates water from water. And when he does that, he creates atmosphere. He creates a sky. And the brand new light that God just gives us, it comes up and it goes down and we have another day. On the first day, God made light. On the second day, God created the waters above and the waters below the earth that we can call the atmosphere. Let's continue, verses 9 through 13. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear, and it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. 
Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. Well, God speaks again. And what does he make this time? Uh, let's see. The ocean's in the ground. On the third day, God makes land dry ground. Food. Yeah, he makes land. Yeah, he makes land on the third day. God takes the land and he marries the land with vegetation and he marries the land with the waters below the earth, the sea, that he had just created. And so he creates, he teams the dry land along with the waters and he allows the dry ground to bear fruits and vegetables and trees. Mm -hmm. On the first day, God creates light. Mm -hmm. On the second day, God creates the waters above and the waters below the earth. Mm -hmm. On the third day, God creates dry land. So, to pause, what does God make, or what does God do on the seventh day of creation? God rests on the seventh day of creation. That's something that we have known from our earliest days of church school. That on the seventh day, that God rested. So then, if we can learn what God does in the first three days of creation, we will have a firm grip on the rest of creation. Because now we will see that in the next three days of the creation story, God really doesn't create a whole lot. But what he does is he fills and he organizes what he has already created. On the first day, God made light. And the next thing that we'll see is that God will organize the light. Then God created atmosphere. And then we'll see coming up how God organized atmosphere. Then God made dry land. And now we will see how God organized the dry land or what God filled the dry land with. So if we can remember the first three and then remember the remnants of the next three, then we have a good grasp on being able to name what God did in all seven days of creation. Was there a question? Yes, I have a question. Hey. Hi. In the beginning, the first one was was what? Light. Light? Okay, so it wasn't God created heaven and earth? Well, he, he created heaven and earth before we started the story. On the first day, God created light. Um, and so, yes, the first thing that was created was heaven and earth. Uh, right. But the first, the first day of creation, the focus of the study tonight is the seven days of creation. And so on the first day of creation, on the first day, God created light. I got you. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Um, all right, so we stopped at verse 13. So we go on to verse 14 now, and we will read 14 through 19. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, 
the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. So what we see is that God puts lights in the sky to separate the day from the night. Then God makes two great lights, one light that only comes out during the day and another light that only comes out at night. What do we call those two lights? The sun and the moon. The sun and the moon. Sun and the moon. And what lights are in the sky to separate the day from the night? What do we call those lights? Stars. Stars. Yeah. So on the first day, God creates light. Now on the fourth day, all God does is organize the light. On the fourth day, God does something with the light he made. Because on the fourth day, God creates the sun, the moon, and the stars. And so when we, are in the, when we go in terms of learning this, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Because if we remember light, then all we have to remember on the fourth day is what God did with the light that he had already created. Verses twenty. Through 23. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. On the first day, God creates light. On the second day, God creates atmosphere. He creates the waters above and the waters below the earth, which we call the air and the sky. And he creates the waters below the earth, the seas, the rivers, the lakes, and the ocean. So what does God do to organize his creation on the fifth day? What does God place in the air and in the sea as far as his creation. What does he do? The birds and the air and the fish and the sea. Yes. Yeah. On the fifth day. Yeah. Yeah. Was that Brother brother, brother Jesse? Is that you? Um, Nixon. Hey, hey, Brother Willie. Yeah. Um, yeah, what, what God does on the fifth day is just put something in what he already made. He had already had plenty of air. He already had plenty of water. And so what he does is he makes the the birds of the air in the air and puts the fish of the sea in the sea on the fifth day. Verses 24 and 25. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. The livestock the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kind, the livestock according to their kind, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. On the third day, God created dry ground. Now, how does God populate dry ground on 
the sixth day. What does he do? Animals that could live on the ground, he made them. Yeah. Absolutely. God gives us animals, land, animals, livestock, uh, everything that can move on the ground. God fills the ground on the sixth day. But God put something else on dry ground other than animals. What is it? Man. 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 Yeah. Verses 26 and 27. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God says, let us make man. Who is God talking to? Yeah, he's speaking. Um, I really like what someone said. Someone said he's speaking to himself. Yeah. He's speaking to the spirit of God that we know now as Jesus. Mm-hmm. But he's also speaking to the heavenly host. He's speaking to the angels. God is not alone. And God decides to make himself a man. But he takes it a step further. He chooses to make a man in his own image. So what does that mean? It means that you and I, we look like God. So when we do good, we look just like God looks when God blesses us. What does that also mean? When we do bad, we still look like God. We look like God because we have God's face. We have his image. So we have a great responsibility to do good with the face and the image that we have been given. Mm -hmm. Verses 26 to 31 now. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and the wild animals, over all the creatures that move along the ground, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. We see that God makes man. Not only does he make man, he makes man in his own image. God loans his face to us. And then right after he gives us his image, the next thing he gives us is dominion. 
He gives us authority. He gives us rule over all the fish, over all the birds, over all the cattle, over all the wild animals. God creates us, and God puts us in charge. Now, there's a very good part about being in charge, and the good part about being in charge is that we are in charge. The not-so-good part about being in charge is that when we are in charge, we are also held responsible. All right. Uh, verse uh, Chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. God creates all we can see, and God creates all that we cannot see in six days. Mm-hmm. By the time the seventh day rolls around, God decides to rest. Let me ask this question to the group. Is God tired? No. 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 No, I don't think so. No. So why then would God rest? Everything was completed. Well, I think maybe just to admire everything that he had done and just to recognize the beauty and um, everything, and the, the plan that he had come up with on, on how to create a universe, a world, and fill it and have people um, enjoy it. So he, I've heard that, that he did it so he could look back over what he had done, mm-hmm. so he could enjoy it, because everything was completed, and I agree with both of you. I agree with both of you wholeheartedly. Yeah. Why else would God rest? I'm listening. He wanted us to follow that example. Yeah. I believe that God rested because he then tells us to rest. God rests because he is our example. God rests, and not only does he rest, he makes the seventh day holy. And he calls us to a holy Sabbath of rest at the conclusion of our own work weeks. So, God made light on the first day. He made atmosphere on the second day. He made dry ground on the third day. He made sun, moon, and stars on the fourth day. He made uh, fish of the air uh, fish of the sea, birds, birds of the air, and fish of the sea on, uh, on the uh, next day. He makes man on and dry and animals and man on the sixth day. That's a, that's a whole full week that God makes, that God has. Mm-hmm. And you and I, here we are on Thursday evening, we haven't done nearly as much work as God did in that first week. <laughs> but guess what? Yes, ma'am. Um, you don't think he would be tired? <laughs> he, he might need rest. <laughs> well, that's a great. Well, well, I, I get you, but you know, the good, the good news for our if man's not acting out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is a lot of work. That's if man's lot. not acting out, he will get tired. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the good news is, Psalm 121 tells us that God neither slumbers 
Okay. North right. Fleet. Yeah. Well, that's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so thousands of years after he's done this, God can listen to the prayer that you and I will pray in 10 minutes or so. And at the same time, millions of children around the world are saying their nightly prayers. And God gets to hear and answer all of those prayers. Yeah. And so God, I don't think I'd want a God that would get tired. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I don't think I'd want to give to a God or serve a God that got tired. Because, because what if he got tired when I needed him most? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So God rests not for him, mm-hmm. but he rests for us. Because every now and then, and a lot of us are tired even on Thursday night, and we've only worked four nights. Mm-hmm. Every now and then, we need to take a time out in our own lives. And God reminds us in the Ten Commandments to remember the Sabbath day, the same day he gives us in Genesis 2. And he made it holy in Genesis 2, but our commandment tells us, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And then God goes as far as to remind us, in six days, I made everything you can see. In six days, I made everything you cannot see. And I rested as your example on the Sabbath day. And I blessed the Sabbath day. I blessed the seventh day. Okay, uh, let's let's recap. And um, uh, tonight tonight is going to be the shortest lesson just because I want us to always be uh, equal in time with the 12 o'clock group. And uh, I don't ever want any session to get ahead of another session. And um, and uh, we ended the 12 o'clock session a little early to, today. And, um, and next week is going to be Genesis, all of Genesis 2, all of Genesis 3, and perhaps Genesis 4 uh, and 5. Uh, this will be one of the few times that we will read verse for verse in terms of Scripture. This study is designed for the big ideas of the Bible, the big quotes, the big people, the big places, and the big things. Uh, so there will be some items that we will omit in order to keep things fresh and in order to keep things uh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Let's recap tonight. On the first day... God creates light. On the second day, he creates atmosphere, the waters above and the waters below the earth. On the third day, he creates dry ground. Then what God does is he fills and organizes the creation he just made. On the fourth day, he organizes the light into the sun, the moon, and the stars. On the fifth day, he Uh, fills the waters above and waters below with the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. On the sixth day, God puts on dry ground land, animals, and man. And on the seventh day, God rests Um, because that's exactly what he wills for us, and that is a day of rest and thanksgiving after the work. But here's what I'm going to ask you to do now. Uh, I have been reading uh, off of my computer screen my Bible, and what I'm going to ask that you would kindly do is if you have a paper Bible in front of you, I'm asking you to close it. Uh, if you have, uh, If you're reading it off of a screen, however it is that you're reading your Bible, that you would either turn your head away from it or you would close it because now we need to test to see if we, were, if we, uh, if we have what I hope that we have. Uh, we're going to go through the um, the first uh, the first seven days of creation in order. And while we have a great crowd on this line, I think we're up to yeah, we got a good crowd uh, on this line tonight. Um, what I did not tell um, the twelve o'clock group is that um, there may be a small 
45 section, 45 second period of time and during the worship hour on Sunday morning that I asked my Bible scholars as a group to let me know uh, what we did in order. So let's, let's see if we have it. Mm-hmm. What, does God, what does God make on the first day? Light. 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 First day of creation, God makes light. On the second day, God makes atmosphere. atmosphere. Waters above and below. Yes, ma'am. On the third day, God makes dry ground. Uh, yes, dry ground and waters. Dry, waters, yeah. dry ground and the waters beneath Real the earth. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, so that's the first three days. On, on the fourth day? The organized. The sun and the moon. moon. Uh, the sun, sun, the moon, and the stars. stars. From the dry ground, God now makes the sun, the moon, and the stars. Mm-hmm. On on the fifth day, uh, God, yes. He fills the fills sea the with the fish and the air with the birds. Birds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Low and beneath uh, the waters. Yeah. The, the, the birds of the air. Yes. And the fish of the sea. Yes. And on the sixth day, God makes animals, animals land animals, man, and man. man, and woman. God, and God does what on the seventh day? He rests. Yes. On the seventh day, God, God rests. He does, he does nothing. Uh, he, he, uh, I do agree that he, um, that he admires what he had made, and he um, he rests, and not only does he rest, he commands us to also rest. And um, sisters and brothers, that is the that is the study for for tonight. We will move forward uh, with Genesis two through uh, likely five on next week, both at twelve thirty. And at 7, uh, this phone call uh, can hold, I think we're right at 16 or 17 for right now, but this phone call can hold 100 people at one time. And so, and, and so um, invite and invite and invite again uh, to join us. Hopefully, uh, Sister Louise, uh, did, did your technical problems, uh, are you still having the same issues you had? No, I'm not having any at all. All right. Praise the Lord. So um, so the one technical issue that we thought we had at noon has been resolved. Uh, so um, let me go ahead and count see who we have on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty-two, forty
as she unexpectedly lost her brother, George, earlier this week. Uh, the Reverend Reginald Morton and his family, as um, he also unexpectedly lost an uncle uh, on this week. Uh, I am asking prayers for my family. Uh, Tuesday morning I found that my aunt had passed away in Bamberg, South Carolina, in our home. And um, we are um, preparing for what looks like a Monday funeral. Uh, I will be preaching. I will be giving the eulogy. And I'm um, asking that your prayers for my Uncle Gene, uh, who lost his, his wife of uh, close to 50 years, maybe even over 50 years, and uh, for her family. Uh, we call the name of Sister Mary Ray, uh, the Reverend Maslin London, who is the pastor of the Brown OAME Church in Calhoun Falls, was on with us earlier, and he asked for prayers for his family. Uh, brother Thomas Aiken, Sister Louise's husband, lost his brother in Illinois, and we are praying for him. Uh, Sister Juanita Jones joined the call from Charlotte earlier and asked for prayers for her family. Sister Frances Richardson's name was called, and Sister Annie Tisdale asked for prayers for her family. Who else are we praying for? So please lift the Nixon household up in prayer. Nixon. Yes, sir. Wallace Spencer, Jr. Wallace Spencer? Yes. Um... Carrie Aiken and family. I hear Carrie Aiken and family. And families. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, the power. Maybe someone on the line could help me with this name, but he got he had a uh, kidney implant, and want to pray that it goes well. I can't think of his first name at this time. Name is Champ Power. Yeah, we call him Champ. Trump, Champ. P O W E R. C H A M P, I think. I think that's right. Thank you. Yes, Power. Charles Power. Okay. Fair family. The Waller the and Bird family. family. Okay, I heard Waller and who? And Burton. The Burton and Waller family. Waller. Y'all ain't going yet. Okay. Okay, okay we get Annie Phillips and Bridie Clinscale there. I can always pray for them. Okay, and also I would like to add the um, the Brownlee family, please. Okay. I'm writing clink scales and the Brownlee family. Yes. All right. Sylvia Rice. Oh, did you make it on, sis? Yes, I'm on. Hey, sis. I Good just, evening. Just talked just talked to your mother a little while ago. Okay. Who else are we Lena praying Dawson for? and family. Yes, ma'am. Sister Nancy, will you be available right after this call? Uh, yes, sir. I I just got your message that you left on the home phone Tuesday. Okay. All right. Yeah, and so I'm sorry I didn't call you back, but I I mean I just got it, so I. Um, yes, I'll call you back after this call, okay? Yes, sir. I understand. All right. Anyone else? Breon Brown. Yes. Lilla Ray. Yeah. I don't think I heard Lizelle Free this time. Lizelle Free and family. Lizelle. Yes. Free. Free. Yes. My son-in-law. Yeah, Neely McAdams. Neely McAdams? Neely McAdams, yeah. It was a shooting on her army base. That's where she work at. Hmm. Lord have mercy. And Valencia Rutherford. Mm-hmm. Lord have mercy. And Lee Rice. Lee Rice. <clears throat> Judy 
have the uh, Judy Gary. Okay. Anyone else? Valencia Rutherford. I have her. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And Kelvin. How about Mrs. Harrison and Mrs. Charlie May? Brother Kelvin Sutton, who is Sister Dowling's brother. And I heard Sister Ella Harrison. Yes. And Sister Charlie Mae Robinson. Yes. You know what? Oh. I prayed for both of them this morning. I'll be happy to do that again. Okay. Hey, Pastor. Hey. Hi. Pray for my mother. Everybody loves to be going home to celebrate her 99th birthday. Amen. All this right. is to George. Yeah. Hey, I didn't know you made it on. I'm glad to glad to hear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> and her name is Alberta Love. Yes. Wonderful. Ninety nine. Praise the Lord. All right. I want you all to know that these prayer lists um, go with me just about everywhere I go. If you notice me on Sunday morning, when I ask for the prayer concerns of St. James, I put this, I, 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 right after the benediction, I put the, the, the bulletin into my pocket. And so when I'm on the treadmill, it's on the treadmill with me. When I am at work, it's on my desk right under my cell phone. And so every now and then, I just open it up and um, call the names to the Lord. Because the thing, is, the fact of the matter is, I don't know most of why or what it is that we are praying for. But I am so glad that when I don't know, that I don't need to know. Uh, that the God that we serve already knows not only what, but he knows how. Mm-hmm. And he knows when he's going to fix it. And so um, uh, I want you to know that I take these prayer requests extraordinarily serious. And um, and uh, there may be times that even as we pray that you would want to give a, a praise report uh, that God has done something uh, in the life of, um, of you or someone that we have prayed for. And um, that's always good news. That that news is worth sharing. All right, um, I'm asking that you would that you would bow your heads now. Great God, our heavenly Father, we thank you for this period of time together. We thank you that you have allowed us a break from our our evening schedules. That you have allowed us a sweet time of fellowship. Thank you, God, for this time of study. We thank you, God, for this time of learning. We thank you, God, for this time of refreshing, and we thank you, God, for this time of renewal. Now, God, we pray that you would allow us to devote some time to the study of your word. God, we realize that we make time for whatever it is that we want to make time for. And so, God, we pray that either at 1230 on Thursday or 7 o'clock on Thursday or 945, on Sunday morning, that we make some time in our schedules uh, to hear your word, to study your word, to read your word, to understand your word. We pray, dear God, that where it is that we have questions, that we ask them. We pray it is that even when the study leader, when the pastor does not have the answer, he doesn't pretend that he does have the answer, but we pray, Father, that he would go and find the answer so that all of us would be uh, richer, wiser, and deeper in your word. We thank you, God, for the great bond that exists with the St. James family and the extended church families. We're reminded, God, that you told us about Job, how Job prayed every day for his family. You told us that Job prayed for his children every day, even when they were doing good, that Job prayed for them. And, God, we are reminded to constantly pray for each other. In that spirit, God, we lift to you every name we called at noon. You already know those names. You heard us at noon. 
And God, we pray that you would continue to minister to their particular conditions. For those that we mentioned at noon that were in bereavement, God, remind them that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. We pray, Father, your hand on all names that were already called. Now, God, we have some fresh names that have come before us. And we pray, Father, for the Nixon family. We pray, God, your hand of mercy upon Brother Wallace Spencer, Jr. We pray, God, your hand of provision on Sister Carrie Aiken and uh, her families, the families associated with Sister Carrie Aiken. We pray, God, your hand of healing and touch on Brother Champ Power, that whatever it is that they put in his body to put back into order, uh, that you would continue to make a way out of no way. We pray for Sister Fair and her family in their time of bereavement, for the Waller and Burton family, for Sister Annie Phillips and Sister Brody Clinkscales, for the Brownlee family, and for Sister Sylvia Rice. We pray, God, your hand on Sister Evelina Dawson. We pray your hand of protection and sanctuary on Brother Breon Brown, a service member, on Sister Neely McAd on Neely McAdams, a service member, on Valencia Relaford, a service member. Protect them, seal them, cover them, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray for Sister Lilla Ray. We pray for Brother Lizelle Free away in California and ill. We pray for Lee Rice, for Judy Gary, for Kelvin Sutton, for Ella Harrison, and for Sister Charlie Mae Robinson. And God, even as we pray for all of these others, it is with a sincere and glad heart that we thank you for the life and the legacy of Sister Alberta Love. We thank you, God, for her 99 years that you have given her to serve on this earth. We thank you, God, for the legacy that is her family. And we thank you, God, and we pray that you would allow her life to be a witness and an example to us of what we can do because you promised um, that you would give long life to those of us and, and to those of us who follow your, your word, your will, and your way. Now, God, we pray your hand on those who may be cold tonight. We pray, Father, that you would allow us uh, to do whatever it is that we can do to rescue the perishing, to care for the dying. We pray now, God, a special prayer for the St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church, that you would allow us to comfort those who are afflicted, that you would create in us clean hearts, and renew right spirits within us. Help us, God, to be able to say that we are the heart of Abbeville, and help us, God, to be able to say it with a straight face so that we will, we will help more than we hurt, that we will reach out our hands and reach out our hearts to lift and to cheer others. Now, God, it's late and we are tired, and so, God, whenever it is that we do go and seek for rest, we pray that you would give us sweet rest. And then as we rest tonight, that you would refresh our souls, that you would restore our souls, and that, dear God, you would wake us up in the morning energized and refreshed to do your work, to do your will, and to do them both your way. Now, bless us all, guide us all, Keep us all, direct us all, protect us all, watch over us all. God, we pray now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Right. Thank, you. Thank you all for joining us. I hope to talk to you real soon. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Have a good one, everybody. All right, everybody be blessed. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>